गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन वेलकम टू माई फर्स्ट ऑनलाइन कंप्यूटर क्लास इन दिस न्यू सेशन बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई फर्स्ट चैप्टर आई विल एडवाइज यू टू स्टे सेफ एट होम माइक्रोसॉफ्ट ऑफिस इज डिजाइन स्पेसिफिकली टू बी यूज फॉर ऑफिस और बिजनेस यूज इट इज डेवलप्ड बाय माइक्रोसॉफ्ट इट मेनली कंसिस्ट ऑफ वर्ड एक्सेल आउटलुक पावर पॉइंट एक्सेस एट्सेट्रा सो दीज सॉफ्टवेयर कैन बी यूज डिपेंडिंग ऑन द रिक्वायरमेंट एज वर्ड इज यूज फॉर क्रिएटिंग डॉक्यूमेंट एक्सेल इज यूज फॉर डाटा एनालिसिस एंड न्यूमेरिक कैलकुलेशंस पावर पॉइंट इज यूज टू क्रिएट एंड डिलीवर प्रेजेंटेशन सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन आर रिक्वायरमेंट वी कैन यूज एनी ऑफ द एप्लीकेशन we are going to start with excel today as you can see in this figure the three topics are given so we'll be discussing one by one first is the spreadsheet second is formulas and function and third is the range children you have studied excel in 7th class also so here i'm just briefing you again when you open excel this type of grid will be seen on the screen as you see in figure 1 it is in a form of table which consists of columns and rows a b c d are the columns and 1 2 3 4 are the rows so intersection of a column and a row makes a cell in this figure you can see that cell a1 is active if you press enter key a2 cell will become active above the status bar you can see three tabs sheet 1 sheet 2 and sheet 3 currently sheet 1 is active now my next topic is formulas and its types formulas are user defined instructions which are used for calculations whenever we want to write a formula we should always start with an equal to sign followed by the cell addresses which we want to use like in figure 2 a sample worksheet of fruits name number of raw ripe and rotten fruits is given Now my active cell is E2, in which I am calculating the total number of raw, ripe, and rotten grapes. For this, I need to first keep my cell E2 active, and write equal to B2 plus C2 plus D2, and finish by pressing Enter key. Now you will see the answer as 31 in cell E2. Apart from numeric calculation, we can also add two or more text values with the help of ampersand sign. ampersand sign joins two or more different values and places them into one cell this is called concatenation so text concatenation can be done by ampersand symbol in excel as you see in figure 3 my f2 cell is having the result as grapes mango without any space and you can see in the formula bar the formula is equal to a2 ampersand a3 A2 has a cell entry as grapes and A3 has a cell entry as mango. So when we join them together, the output will be grapes and mango. There are two types of formulas: basic formula and compound formula. Basic formula involves only one operator. It can be either plus, minus, multiply, or divide. So we can use any one operator in a basic formula. as in figure 4 we can see that in cell e2 we have written equal to b2 plus c2 plus d2 in this only addition operator is being used so this is an example of basic formula whereas in compound formula we can see in figure 5 we are using more than one operator addition as well as division equal to b2 plus c2 plus d2 divided by 3 so this is an example of compound formula since we are using more than one operator likewise we can have many more example for calculating simple interest we need principal into rate into time divided by 100 so in this we are using multiplication and division operator that is more than one operator is being used so this is also an example of compound formula what is a range group of cells is called a range now here i can see that here b2 cell is active if i want to select b2 b3 b4 and b5 all the cells together so hold the shift key 
and drag it with the left mouse button so all the four cells will get selected so this is called a range whenever we specify range range is always given with a colon sign so what is the range here b2 colon b5 instead of writing b2 b3 b4 b5 we can write b2 colon b5 now if i want to give a name to this range so you have selected the range now we can give the range name in this name box so what give a suitable name so that it is easy for the later use now here i am giving the name as raw and press enter key that means the range b2 to b5 is raw now if anywhere where i want to use this range i can use with the name along with the function name now if i want to calculate the sum of the whole raw range i will write equal to the function name is sum write the sum and in bracket write the name of the range now my range, name range was raw so sum raw press enter key now my answer is 42 so i can use it with any function with the average with the maximum with the minimum which are function as per your requirement if i want to use average function so i can use average and in bracket i can write raw so the computer will automatically calculate the average of this raw range now you can see my total was 42 so 42 divided by the number of cells how many cells were there four so 42 divided by 4 is 10.5 so this is my result with the average now this is used to calculate the result much faster as if we write the formula excel provides us with three different methods of referencing cells within our worksheet formulas these methods are known as relative cell referencing, absolute cell referencing, and mixed cell referencing. Let's see examples of each of these methods. Imagine that on this simple worksheet, we want to add together the price of a menu item along with its associated amount of tax in order to determine the total price that should be charged for the item. Using the delicious nachos as an example, we could accomplish this task by first clicking on cell D4, where we want the total to appear, typing the equal sign in order to tell Excel that we want it to calculate the value that will be displayed in the cell, and then typing B4 plus C4 in order to tell Excel that we want it to add together the values contained in cells B4 and C4. After pressing the Enter key, Excel performs our requested calculation and displays the resulting total in cell D4. At this point, if we were to select cell D4 and use the fill handle to drag our calculation down to cells D5 and D6, we would see that Excel has correctly calculated the totals for the menu items appearing in rows 5 and 6 on our worksheet. The reason that these calculations are correct is that by default, Excel uses what is known as relative cell referencing whenever we copy a formula from one cell to the next. Put another way, Excel is aware of the relative positions of the cells whose values we are manipulating, and it automatically updates cell references accordingly. Recall that in cell D4, we instructed Excel to add together the values of cells B4 and C4. If we moved to cell D5, we will see that Excel has automatically updated the cell references such that the value displayed in cell D5 is the result of adding together the values of cells B5 and C5. Excel has similarly updated the row numbers for the calculation in cell D6. Again, this behavior is known as relative cell referencing. As a brief aside, you may have also noticed that Excel automatically formatted our results using the accounting number format. We could easily change this if we wanted to by using the number format drop-down box. However, in this case, the accounting number format seems appropriate for our purposes. Although relative cell referencing can be very useful, 
There are often times when we do not want Excel to behave in this way. For example, imagine that instead of providing the specific amount of tax for each menu item, we instead wanted Excel to calculate the proper amount of tax for us given a particular tax rate. In this case, let's say that our tax rate is 7.5%. I think I will also use the percent formatting style in order to make our tax rate look a bit better, and I will also increase the number of decimal places to 2. Next, let's delete all of the existing values in our tax column, since we want Excel to calculate these values for us based on the tax rate. Moving to cell C4, I can tell Excel to calculate the amount of tax for the delicious nachos, by entering the formula equals B4 times B1, where cell B4 contains the price of the nachos, and cell B1 contains our desired tax rate. When I press the Enter key, we can see that Excel has correctly calculated the tax for the delicious nachos. But if I use the fill handle to drag that calculation down to cells C5 and C6, we can see that Excel has not calculated the correct results for these two cells. As you may have guessed, the reason for this is that Excel is using relative cell referencing. Therefore, instead of using the tax rate value in cell B1, Excel attempted to use the values in cells B2 and B3 when performing the tax calculations for cells C4 and C5. In order to fix this problem, we can use what is known as absolute cell referencing. When we use absolute cell referencing, we are explicitly instructing Excel not to update the row numbers or column letters in a cell reference when we copy a formula from one cell to the next. In our current example, we could tell Excel to use absolute cell referencing by clicking on cell C4 and then selecting the reference to the tax rate in cell B1 within the formula. By then pressing the F4 key once, we can see that Excel adds a dollar sign in front of the column letter and the row number. A dollar sign in front of the column letter tells Excel not to automatically update the column letter when we copy and paste the formula, while a dollar sign in front of the row number tells Excel not to automatically update the row number when we copy and paste the formula. After implementing absolute cell referencing for our tax calculation formula, if we now copy the formula to cells C5 and C6, we will see that Excel now performs the calculations correctly, since it is multiplying the fixed tax rate by the price of the current menu item. Note also that if we now change the fixed tax rate, the amount of tax for each item and the associated total price of each item will be updated automatically. Now that we're familiar with relative and absolute cell referencing, 